Mr. Kevin Connolly is here today. Kevin, good to see you, buddy. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Very yeah. excited. Last time you were here, you weren't a dad. Now you're a dad. I'm a dad. But Changes one, things. One thing has stayed the same. In between, it's been about four years or so since you and I saw each other and I did a show together. The Mets are the Mets. The Mets are the Mets. Right? Some things never change. When you grew up on Long Island, the same high school that Marcus Stroman went to. Patrick two of the Medford. most successful guys from that <laughs> high school. <laughs> the Mets will always be the Mets. Yeah. I mean, is it too early to push the panic button? I, I think mean, the owner did today. Life. I think uh, Steve Cohen. And if you're a diehard Mets fan, you got to react to Steve Cohen's tweet only because... It's the exact opposite of the tweet he put out a week ago, about a week and a half ago, when he went down to Philadelphia to see the Mets in the clubhouse before Zach Wheeler mowed them down. And he went into the clubhouse, and Steve Cohn comes out, and he puts out on Twitter, I met the team, they're very confident, the hits are going to come today. And then they got two hit by Zach Wheeler in the Phillies, right? I think Nimmo had the only two hits in the game. Now, all of a sudden, a week and a half later, as uh, they are, again, stifled offensively, uh, all beat by one of the better teams in baseball, uh, the Giants, there's no offense against the Dodgers, and blah, blah, blah. He now says, what the hell's going on? How could you be a professional and actually go out like this? So, it's Steinbrenner-esque. You wonder about if Twitter was around when George Steinbrenner... Does he go full oh. Twitter mode? There's Steinbrenner? no doubt Steinbrenner would have had a Twitter account. Big and one. it would have been ugly. <laughs> it would have been that would like been what great. Steve Cohen just did on like uh, some kind of nuclear flame every day. Do you think he regrets sending out that tweet? No, I don't. I think, if anything, he regrets the tweet from a week and a half ago when, when he's like, I looked these men in the eyes and they uh, they told me this hit's coming. And literally, it's been a week like, you're four and a half games out of first place. You lost five games in a row. And as much as people don't want to hear it, you know, I sing that song for a reason. You know, it's just the same old Mets. It doesn't matter who owns them. You need, like, a um, almost like a DNA washing of some kind. Cleansing. I don't know. Yeah, cleansing. A deep cleanse. Yeah. The New York Mets is a franchise, maybe this offseason, because... This offseason is going to end the way they all end, not in the postseason. I think the New York Mets need, in the parking lot of City Field, a fan-run deep cleansing. Like, I don't know if you're like a black magic guy or if you kill a chicken or something. or Something, something. voodoo. Voodoo related. Yeah. Something. They did an exorcism. Yeah. Maybe like an exorcism. An exorcism. I don't exorcism. know if you're are you a voodoo guy. <laughs> I'm not a voodoo guy. Nor am I an you're exorcism not, guy. You're not a black magic guy? I think I think there's a lot of baseball left, Craig. I do. And and like you said, five days ago it was one thing. And look at the Yankees. And I admittedly yep. I'm a Yankee fan. But, uh, you know, seven days ago... The Yankees were in trouble, and now they're uh, ahead yeah, of the Yeah, the Boston Yankees' Red comeback Sox. is remarkable. We're going to get into that for sure in a second. But in case you missed it, here's what Steve Cohen said. I'm quoting now. It's hard to understand how professional hitters can be this unproductive. Like, and I'm sure the players are sensitive about it, but he is the owner. Like, if you or I came out and said it, you know, Stroman, who's your buddy from, uh, from Long Island, you know he's a very sensitive guy. Like, he reacts... We'd probably just call us racist or something if we came out and said, you know, how could you be that unproductive if he were you know, a hitter? Because I thought he pitched great last night. He did, he did his job for sure. He also hits pretty well. He got a single last night, made a great Jeter-esque play, uh, throw a guy out. Stroman's not the problem. Right. Stroman, I think, has had a very good year, bordering on great at times. That being said, he is very sensitive. But anyway, it's hard to understand how professional hitters can be this unproductive. The best teams have a more disciplined approach. The slugging and OPS numbers don't lie. Like, he just bitch-slapped every single dude, including Pete Alonso, in the dugout. What's he talking about? Right? The hardest thing in the world to do is hit a baseball. And they do come. It comes in bunches. Yeah. What's he talking it about? Just, it hasn't come yet this year. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're waiting for the other bunches, I think. They right? need some more bunches. Yeah, but, like, if you're a player on the Mets, you react to that, I guess, one of three ways. One, you could be like, I don't give a damn what the guy says, right? I got mine. I got my contract. Right. Number two, you react that you could come out uh, and say, that really pisses me off. What's he talking about? We're busting our ass, trying our hardest. Hitting a baseball is the hardest thing in the world. Or number three, you could be really kind of like sensitive and insecure and your butt's hurt. Like, I can't believe he said that. Wah. Do you think they have a team group text? <laughs> a group text? Like, 
Is that yeah. possible with I think, everybody? I think it's probably fashions, like, you know, friendships, like, you know, in movies you've worked on, there's like a group of guys you're friends with. Not everybody. Multiple chats. Multiple chats. Yeah, you've, you're like, different you're involved chats. in different, different rooms, I think. Is he on a group chat with some guys where he says, to, hey, Pete, you know, I wasn't talking about you? Oh, that's a good question. Like, do you think he separately reached out reaches to out to, out to like, guys. Stroman and goes, hey, you, you, killed, you did your job. I'm about to fire up this tweet. Just yeah. know I'm not talking about I, you. I could, <laughs> well, it'll be interesting. I wonder if... There's guys I know for a fact he's close with, right? Right. Guys who like eating at his house and he's building a relationship with. I wonder if any of those guys reached out to him and said, You're not talking about me, are you? Like Can for, you, do you know, that? like the reverse of that. Can you, know what you mean? do that? Can you text the owner? I mean, I guess it depends on the relationship, right? I don't know. I, I could know. never text the guy at HBO, no. the head guy. Like going, if, What's if, up, dude? If, you know? if Doug Ellen said to you guys, well, Doug Ellen's bad my example, boy. Him, but... I, could, I could say whatever I want to, but I would never have called Michael Lombardo at HBO and been like, dude, what was that about? We're doing nine more seasons. You know, you don't, it doesn't work that way. So I wonder. That is interesting. Like, it's one thing. Did he reach out privately to anyone? And then the, what I just said, the opposite. Did anyone reach out to him and say, you're clearly not talking about me, right? Or where's this coming from? But he's pissed. And he's pissed because he's a fan, which I think ultimately is going to make him a good owner. But, you know, year one of the Steve Cohen regime, let's be honest, it's a failure based on what expectations were. There's no way that he doesn't hit up Pete Alonzo on the side and go, hey, dude, this was not obviously not talking about you, right? It's like, I, I got I to imagine. There's an old story about the 1980 USA hockey team with Herb Brooks. Uh, I'm not making it up. You could go watch uh, your Miracle on Ice. It's a, it's a factual story with Mike Ruzioni where – Herb Brooks was toughest on Mike Arruzzioni because he was kind of viewed, he was A, the captain, but right. he was like legitimately the de facto leader of this young group of teenage kids, right? And he and Arruzzioni, like the team is now turning against Herb Brooks because they think he's too tough on, on Arruzzioni. So he and Arruzzioni meet privately. And he goes, I rec- I see what's happening. Arruzzioni talked to him about it. He goes, the guys are turning on you because you're killing me when it doesn't make sense to be killing me. He goes, so let's make a deal. When I'm really pissed at you, I'm going to call you Michael. And when I'm not pissed at you, but I'm using you to make an example for the team, I'm going to call you a Ruzioni. Interesting. So it'd be interesting if he says to Alonzo, listen, if I call you the polar bear, I'm not talking <laughs> about you. If I call you Alonzo, I'm pissed at you. That would be that Some would be version of that. Right? Some version of that. Well, listen, if you're a diehard Met fan, listen, it's uh, it's collapsing. And there's not much you can do about it. It's like a very slow car wreck. And I think Steve Cohen just added fuel to the fire by putting it out there. Now, some of you might love that. Like, there's an aspect of me as a fan that's like, good. We need more of that. It's like accountability. Like, we all see it. They can't hit the ball. It's nice to know the owner's not all Shangri-La about I looked them in the eyes in Philadelphia and there's hits in those bats. There's not. So seeing the owner, I think for the first time on Twitter, being real and showing his frustration as a fan, I think most Met fans would like that. It's just getting the guys going. Maybe. Right? I mean, Phil Jackson used to do that kind of right. stuff and call people out. And, uh, you know, maybe, who knows? We'll see if it works. Meanwhile, your beloved New York Yankees uh, take both from the Red Sox. Both games, I mean, the final two innings are you know, crazy, edge of your seat stuff. They've now uh, percentage points ahead of the Red Sox. Have a percentage point. Right, there you go. And... It's exactly what we all thought it was going to be when I said I'd be a Yankee fan this year. Why is it? What, what, now, what huh? is that about? You just So decided- I announced, I don't know if you uh, and and uh, your girl did this way before you had your baby. You know, like a lot of people, uh, new parents these days, you're a new parent, have these gender reveal parties. Please tell me you didn't. You we, did. We had a small version, very small <laughs> version. And by that, you we did. filled up a balloon with yeah, some yeah, powder, yeah. But, but it wasn't did. anything you crazy. Did. Yeah. We didn't burn anything down. Okay, we did not burn anything down. You did have a gender reveal party. We had I'm a gender assuming reveal it wasn't gathering. your choice, but you went along with it. I went along with it, exactly. Okay. And I still got yelled at because I didn't take good enough pictures. Uh, whatever. You can't Got wait. it. All right. So, I, you know, that I never did a gender reveal party. My kids are much older. So I decided to be a part of what you know, guys do these days. Right that I would do a team reveal. You know, I, I came out, you know, I came back from my uh, my time away, and I grew up a diehard Mets fan, it's well known, but also in 2009, I started the church of Mets fans for Yankees, because the Yankees were playing the Phillies in the World Series, and I wasn't going to root for the Phillies, so I wanted the Yankees to win the World Series that year. Well documented, right? So I revealed this year that my fandom for the year was going to be, and we did a whole balloon thing like you guys did, and I'm a New York Yankee fan. 
Wow. So from April through May to June and most of July, I'm getting blamed for the Yankee demise. Oh, you, you decided him. to be a Yankee fan, and we're not going to make the playoffs. You're a mush. It's all your fault. All of a sudden, now that you fast forward here to mid-August, and the Yankees are now in the wild card spot, and the Yankees have caught the Boston Red Sox, and the only team left ahead of them now are the Tampa Bay Rays, who, to their credit, are killing it right now. All of a sudden, my decision way back in March, the end of March, is looking like a pretty good decision. Did and you I'm do, not the mush. Did you do the football one as well? Does that change? No, I'm a Jet fan. Okay. I will never be a Giant fan. I, don't, I respect it. It's like Hyman Roth. I respect Hyman Roth. I did business with Hyman Roth, but well, I, I never trust, trust Hyman, Hyman Roth. Roth. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. No. So I respect the Giants. I'll never be a Giant fan. Uh, I'll never be a Nets fan. My favorite team of all my teams are the Knicks. That'll never, ever change. But when it came to baseball, I don't have a lot of experience rooting for a winner. Right. And I decided that here in the second stage of my life and the second opportunity I got that I only wanted to be associated with good, positive things. <laughs> and the Mets just aren't good or positive. So I decided to go with the Yankees. Now, what happens <laughs> if it swings the other way? A lot of, what, what, what yeah. is there, 50 games left? There are about 50 games 50, left, yeah. That's a lot of games. Yeah. A bad weekend for one team and a good weekend for the Mets. Yeah. And they're right back in. Yeah, so but maybe I'm, a little early. I do have both hats. Right. In case. I, <laughs> Just in case. I do have both hats right in front of me. Just you never know how it goes. You never know. And I'm willing to change with the wind. I, I, I'm willing to admit that that you're does happen. Free, you're an open bandwagon jumper. Well, I'm going to stay with the Yankees all year because okay, I took the to. beating when they weren't playing well. Right. So I might as well enjoy the success now. Like, I, I, I got beaten down pretty good. Like, I was being blamed for Aaron Boone managerial decisions. <laughs> yeah. That's not right. At a certain point, it's out of your control, Craig. Right. You can only do so much. Well, but according to people listening, like, I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the guy. I, I don't know if you know this, but when your Islanders were making the run to the Eastern Finals this year, and uh, I want to get rid of the bad juju and help the Islanders out, I put uh, Evan Roberts right here in this little circle in front of us. And we did the juju bath. I I'm saw sure you that. saw it. I saw that. Yeah. 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 And they won. Yeah. They won well, game six that they night. They won game six. That was a big one. That yes. was a big one. And I know we're not going to talk hot. But Correct. Uh, we're not allowed to talk hockey. You know, Al Dukes famously once said, Kevin, when you start talking hockey, I can hear click, them changing click, the channel. Click, <laughs> click, click. <laughs> so we'll stay off hockey. The Islanders are awesome. That's all there is to it. There you go. Well, listen, you got a whole new building? Yeah. I did the shovel ceremony. I was oh, in oh, there. Oh, were you there for that? I had a hard hat, a shovel. It was really? humiliating. It was hot. It was weird. What was humiliating about it? It's Did you have weird. a tough weird. It's just weird. Like, I'm in a suit, oh, right? They, like, oh. with a hard hat and a shovel. Was it an Islanders hard hat? Yes. Did they put the logo yes. on it? it was an Islanders hard hat. And the shovels were like hockey sticks. Okay. Like Islanders sticks with these, like, metal shovels. Right. They're really cool. I got it back to L.A. Okay. But they were, they were going... They were going like hotcakes. They said, Kevin, you can't leave with the shovel. We'll send it to you. I was like, all really? right. Really? Yeah. Well, so, because there was like a collector's item? Yeah, well, I guess. But so, do you have them. the hockey stick shovel? Yes, they said, we promise we will get you the shovel. Conor McGregor didn't steal it? Conor McGregor did right, not I'm just steal checking. We'll get it. I'll explain that a little bit later right. on uh, <laughs> in the show. <laughs> I wonder how many of those hockey stick shovels there are. Can't be a lot of them. But I think the politicians, and there were a lot of people wanted them. They right. were like big photo op stuff, but they were really well done. Right. I got the Anders Lee. Got the the Anders Lee got hockey the Anders stick Lee. shovel. All and right. That'll be all for the Islanders. We're sorry. We apologize. All good. All good. <laughs> We're going to get all your calls as well. 877-337-6666. Do you like what Steve Cohen did? Are you against it? Do you want to blame somebody? Feel free. And if you're a Yankee fan that's sitting back in your easy boy right now, just enjoying, I don't know, a, uh, a beer or two, watching the Met world implode after having to endure the Met fan all spring when... We used to say, well, you know, the Yankees are over 500. All every Met fan would say, we're in first place. Hey, the Yankees have the same record as the Mets. Oh, but we're in first place. And now you're four and a half games out. If you're a Yankee fan, are you getting joy out of that? I'm just trying to stay in my lane as a Yankee fan. You're not going to get joy. Because, again, games left. I'm not worried about the Mets. I can't worry about them. I got to worry about... We just got to get in. Big Mac, could you get joy out of uh, watching the Mets implosion because the Mets were so, you know, a lot of them were very mouthy and douchey. Uh, well, they always have been. Yeah. Since I started working with Evan, yes, I take much more joy in it since November <laughs> 9th. Do. No when question about it. When you work with it. Mike, who's a Yankee fan, right. not that big a deal. Not so much. Not but so hearing much. Evan every single every day. Every single day, and particularly yeah. that argument that he would we're make. In we're in first place. place. We're in first Doesn't place. Doesn't matter what your record is. We're exactly in first right. place. Yep. Well, you're not in first place now. No. Nope. Oh, and oh, by the way, you're not in second place either. <laughs> no. Not nah. the division that did everything they could to give it to you either. Yes. So Evan was up late last night tweeting. 
We are sinking like a rock. Yeah. I and he has no outlet. I guess he's probably doing a vacation podcast. I, imagine. Oh, I would imagine. That's about it. 50 games. Yeah. Craig, a lot of baseball left. Well, I'm surprised that you're uh, couching it. I'm surprised that you're not willing I just, to jump I, I'm both, both feet in. And I, I just, it, you know, let's. I'm worried about the Yankees. Let's get right. the Yankees got things to figure out. Yankees well. aren't there yet. You're right. They got you're things right. to figure out. So but it's rather, fun. It's yeah. fun being able to wake up on August, uh, what's today, whatever it is, August 18th, 19th, whatever it is, and, and just know that... The world always writes itself, right? right? The ship will write itself right. eventually. It always does. 